I mean, the dung and the urine may be precious to you, but it is not precious to the cow. It is totally from the cow. If it is precious to the cow, then if you add that dung on their food, they should eat it. Touching the grass or touching the dung is a costly affair as far as a goshala is concerned. We are not removing the dung, we are not removing the urine. In the goshala system, we are missing the urine. But in here, a 4% urea solution is directly falling on the land. We have to do this yes. because this is the sustainable thing yes. for future. Yes. Without purchasing any other modules, without purchasing any inputs, how can we correct? With our resource that we have already, how can we correct? And this person, Anand Savary, who is a biologist, soil biologist in uh, uh, Central Africa, he has even, uh, is the only known to be the land is animal impact. And we have, and that really clicked us because. That is the real utility of this house. Or that is the utility of our uh, powdery or whatever it is. How the powdery helps in uh, on land? They are scratching. How much they are aerating, they are pecking, how much pest they are controlling, that is their purpose, not their meat. So and for cows, so every animal has a particular purpose in this ecosystem, which we are we have, we have not identified or which we have not given to this. We have given only to their meat of direct pollution. So what is this animal impact? That is, what do they do on the soil by their presence and, and their feeding standards? What, what do they do? See, you see this is wild bison grazing in a particular area. So you can just imagine they are confined there together and how many animals are there in a particular area? They are, you don't see them here, one, uh, that means one person is having one cow here, two cows. You know. They are all together, they are in a herd. And in that particular area, you can imagine how much dung falls. Huh? Just imagine this many cows, uh, they are cows, and this much dung has fallen here. So where has the dung fallen? Dung has fallen on their food. They, they are eating grass and the dung has fallen on their food. So tomorrow when they come, this much spread of dung has taken place. Do you think they will eat from that place? Tomorrow they, when they come for grazing, do you think they will eat from this place? They will not eat. So then what will they do? They will go to the next plot. So what will happen to this plot? It will be rusted. So rusting, so it's grazing, rusting, again grazing, rusting. So what is missing now is rusting is not taking place. So this land will be fully rusted for the dung and urine that has fallen here and you have pruned all your plants and that plant also will get rust for regrowth. So after maybe 20 or 30 days when they come back, the dung will be over and there will be lush green grass, again waiting for them to come and feed. And this cycle continues. So we need numbers for that. This system is called high density, short time grazing. That is, they, they will be only here for short time because the even though I am eating the next cow, the previous cow might have put down. So it is covered. So they keep moving kilometers and kilometers. So this is in uh, Belgaum. How we did is we have about 400 acres of land there. To get, we have only few cows, so we, how can we mimic what the bisons have done is we confine their area for a particular time, maybe for 12 hours, maybe for 8 hours, depending on the area we have given. In this case, we have given them for one night. So there is grass growing there, so we have not cut grass for them, we have not chopped grass for them. Their night requirement is here or that particular time requirement is there and they will not go out of, out of this area. And we come there only after 12 hours. Maybe someone will be there, but we'll be watching them what they are doing. They'll be busily eating. After some time, they'll be busily chewing. After some time, they will be lying there. Whatever they do for the 12 hours, depending on the area we have given. And after the 12 hours, when we come, this is what we see there. So you see the outer plot? This is what we see. What all, what all they have done here? They have pruned the grass. 
they have manured that property, they have added urine on that property, they have worked with their hoof on their property, and they have mulched the area. All these done by just their presence. And all this work together is called animal impact. What they do for a particular time. In this case, this is exactly what will happen when you have thousands of bison or lakhs of cows moving through an area. But we don't have that many animals. So with the number of animals we have, how can we mimic that? That is what we did here. This land is ready for whatever operation you want. You want to cultivate, you cultivate. And there is another system that also we have tried. It's called trample seeding. The trample seeding is nothing. Before sending the cows there, we throw the seeds. And we put the cows in that area. They will eat the crop. They will mulch the crop. And at the same time with their hoof, they will seed the seeds. And with the next rain, the crop will start to come up. We have not even tilled or done anything, not even seeding. We have only thrown the seeds and introduced the cows. It is called trampled seeding. That is practice now. So where is the labor here? The labor is just we have kept the cows the place where they have to be kept. It is a natural thing. No, we have to keep them on land. That is the only thing we did here. We are not removing the dung. We are not removing the urine. In the Goshala system, we are missing the urine. But in here, that 4% urea solution is directly falling on the land. 101% utilization of dung and urine in this case. And then, and then where do they go? They go to the next plot. See the grass there, ready for them. So every move they are getting, better, better, better grass. Maybe one day more growth or 12 hour more growth grass they are getting. And they finish this land and they move to the next paddock. This was the stage of grass here which has been properly eaten dunk and they move on to the next plot. So their level of nutrition is superior and the work they are doing is also superior. The only work in this farm is moving them. Nothing else. We are not touching the grass or touching the dung. Touching the grass or touching the dung is a costly affair as far as a Goshala is concerned. You can just imagine how much money uh, the Almugunda is, able to, is, is, produce, is spending here just to give, just because he's touching grass. He has to grow, he has to cut, he has to cut, load, bring it here, chop, and then feed to them. How much money is being spent? And he's touching the dung. How much money is he spending? Collecting everything, then putting it on the vehicle, then taking it to some place, then from there it has to be reached the, your land. In this case, both the things are not there. It's managed. You have a rose plant, when it's a stage, you grow it. And then you keep the rest of the plant, so it will grow again. So it is grazing, is pruning. They are just pruning the grass. So, and then you have to rest that grass, then it will be good. But what happens in, it is happening now is, these cows come to the same place the next day. Same place the next day. They keep on pruning it and they now go down to an overgrazing stage. That will not do any good to the grass. Grass raising, rusting is a must. And that is inbuilt in the grazing because we have put a target in it. So now, uh, this person in this group, you know how he does it. He, he puts them in a particular area and then his son, he has a shower. With that, he spreads the dam. That area where the cows had grazed. So, it is the same effect is there they will not graze in that spot. That, so that same uh, uh, principle is used in different ways. So then mulching of the soil, that is lays the des, uh, dead plant material on the soil and cover as mulch. Seeding, told you how they seed. 100% utilization of dung and urine as manure. Water infiltration breaks hard soil surface to allow water in. When you confine their movement to a particular area, due to that, high impact, the crusty, I mean the uh, compacted layers start to crack. They chip it for you so that water can infiltrate. And naturally the cows are being fed also. That is the animal impact for you. In our system, or the system that is being followed here, it is working against nature. 
the animals are feeding without their normal movement. So animal impact is not there. And then they are eating forages isolated from soil. That means from somewhere you are bringing the organic matter. That organic matter which had to fall there, we have isolated it from another part. And when the cow recycles the grass, when it eats the grass, the dung has nowhere to go where soil life forms will process it to perform their beneficial functions. The dung, where does the dung go here? They go to storage pits. See, in this case, why I have shown this is, this is the principle that has to be followed as far as holistic management of disease is concerned. If you smell manure, if you smell dung or urine, you are smelling mismanagement. There should not be any smell. That is why you don't feel any smell here. It should be immediately removed. That, uh, for example, the most, the, uh, the cleanest part, I mean, toilets you see in the airports. Airports, they maintain the toilet. With, they spend money to maintain the uh, toilets. But even in that uh, toilet, if you enter and if you smell urine or uh, stool, what did you say? Hey, it's not managed well. The same is the case with a uh, goshala. You, you can smell uh, maybe a kilometer far away that there is a goshala there, that urine smell. That's mismanagement. Our level of management should be such that any time you enter the goshala, you will not smell dung or urine. That has to be ensured. Because urine may be precious, I mean the dung and the urine may be precious to you, but it is not precious to the cow. It is too early for the cow. If it is precious to the cow, then if you add that dung on their food, they should eat it. They don't eat it. Even for pigs, they don't uh, like to eat their stool. So that is one of the major things in holistic management. There should not be dung and urine at any point of time in the Goshala. So here it goes to the pit. What happens in the pit? You are dumping over, over, over. That means below there is no oxygen. It becomes anaerobic digestion. That will invite all sorts of pests. And your cows will be attacked by all sorts of flies. Even in human beings, our septic tank is the major source of mosquitoes. Actually, that they, now people have started putting net on that mosquito. Because it is like that only. Because in, in nature, no one accumulates their stool. Only human beings accumulate their stool. Nowhere it is happening. So that is a wrong thing to be done. So in holistic management, that cannot be done. It has to be managed. Either if you are keeping them in the goshala, it has to be managed clean way or move them in the fields, in your agriculture fields. But in, when you work with nature, the animals are feeding with their normal movement on the land. And whatever they eat, it directly falls on this land so that the life forms in the soil can utilize it. I'll show you an example. See, the dung, when they're grazing, it falls on the ground. And this is what happens to it in hours. The dung gets, dung beetles come, they make it into a roll, they take it down, and they bring up the subsoil up. And in hours, you can see the full dung will be covered with mud. The dung will not be there, only mud will be there. The full dung has gone down. And this is what is happening there. This is in another place. Just last night they were kept here. The next day morning you are seeing mud. This is Jaipur. That this much change was there in just one night. How the dung beetles came. This is what is happening. This goes, to, as far as I know, I will have to search again. I have seen it, is, it goes up to even five feet. I don't know whether five meters is there that I have to search. But it, they, this is what they do. They bring it down. And see a place where the dung was once fallen and you see the holes. And now you just uh, go back to that picture wherein you saw a lot of bisons. And just imagine this happens there. And then the next train, where will the water go? The next train, where will the water go? If such pads have come all over in a particular... It did 100% seepage. 
So that is the link between grazing and water infiltration. When a dung, just a dung falls on a path, it can soak a lot of water. And so, but it cannot be that you have five acres, one cow, he grazes there, then he grazes here. No, it has to be confined and moved. Then you will get that impact in a particular area. So this is this is in Belga where we are keeping the cows. That is where it is. So these tunnel systems, they increase the aeration, they reduce the compaction, they bring the subsoil up, incorporates the dung into the soil, and increases the effectiveness of rainfall. What is effective rainfall? Effective rainfall is not your total quota of rain. Effective rainfall is how much rain you could hold in your soil. Soil is the biggest reservoir of water. How much could you load it in your soil? That is important. So it, they help in uh, increasing the... So what is effective rainfall? It is the rain that falls on the surface of the soil, soaks in and then leaves the soil only by two ways. By flowing through the soil to perennial flows, underground water reservoirs, or by trans transpiration through green, through growing plants. This is the only way. It will not grow over the soil. Everything has to go down. Our soils have to be deep. So it has been misunderstood. Say that people started making trenches. That is not what is meant. It should go deep. So to get that deep, you have, should have animal impact on the soil. Otherwise, you'll have to go in for technology. But with our animals, with the animal impact, you can create the same thing. Cheaply, we can do it. It is being done. So in other Veda, about cow dung and urine is told, Throwing away into waste the cow dung and cow urine disfigures the society. I have the trans Sanskrit slogan on top, and this is the meaning. So now you can understand how it, you get disfigured. You replace it with something else, with a chemical, and that will de disfigure your DNA or whichever way, and you yourself will get disfigured. All sort of diseases. Even though you have a, a functional heart, but it is disfigured. And another one, those ill-advised who do not devote their time and labor for utilizing the family cows and cultivate organic crops, they suffer through pest and insects, diseases thrown by Rudra. This is the meaning of that Sanskrit law. That is, if you are not using your family cows, integrating them in your agriculture, you have all chances to get pest attack. So, killing a pest and getting a product is not the healthy way. You shouldn't have a pest on your land. If you do not want a pest on the land, keep your cows there and then do the farming. This is another thing that we do regarding the housing with the thing Sir asked. In this, we give five square meter per cow per day for 12 hours the night. We have an enclosure. This is actually, this thing is used in Zimbabwe where they are protecting them from lions. But in place where I am keeping cows in Belgaum, we are protecting them from tigers. So the material used will be different. Tigers. tigers. We lost five animals. Oh, they are there. We lost, recently only we lost a Total we have lost six, six animals in our farm. So we, we need to have that protection system. Depending on that place. Here you may not be having anything, so we don't need such structures. But some structure should be there so that you can confine them in a particular spot. See, this is in Ahmedabad. They have made a metal structure. This is their agricultural property. This was the place where the cows was yesterday. Now they are here this night. They are fed there. And this, this, this uh, metal structure, it is movable. It will take one hour. It is dismantleable and you put it in another area. And the cows go. The next one will be ready. The morning, that gate will open and they... Yeah, you can try, see, now it is, uh, they are using one wired uh, electric fences, just one wire only is there. It has developed, it has developed so much it has developed. The, to something, shift, uh, something is very visible to sir, me. To shift from the utility of cows for milk to this utility, it is taking a lot of effort. It is a big effort. 
That is why I was telling. No, no, no. You please uh, don't tell them the utility is milk steel. Yeah. Yes. But you are not wasting the byproduct. Means yes. what? Yes. yes. The people are saying byproduct. Yes. To us, it's not the, uh, the byproduct. Product. It's the product. Products. Yes. So let let them understand by their own language. Mm -hmm. But we have to do this yes. because this is the sustainable thing yes. for future. Yes, sir. So the way the language people want to understand, let them understand. Yes, sir. But we should be, we should fix our target. Yes, sir. And we know what's that. Yes. So let them do, or let yes. them understand by their own way. Yes. So slowly coming, slowly coming. But uh, uh, the, when it comes from certain mouths, it is more strong. That is what we want.